This is Cheryl Logan, Superintendent of Omaha Public Schools, and you're watching Soup for the Soul. We record this podcast regularly to keep you up to date on the latest district happenings. This month, we're joining you from Edison Elementary School, home of the Eagles. We're here today with Principal Melanie Fullenkamp and her team as they take a brain break from remote learning lessons. Edison Elementary students are reading rock stars. For most of the summer, they log the highest number of reading minutes. At the end of the summer, Harrison Elementary took the top spot with 75,000 minutes over Edison's 70,000. However, both can expect a treat from the superintendent or something they can use to continue that reading. Way to go, Edison and Harrison students. Reading is a lifelong skill. 20 minutes a night will help you keep building that skill. Not only does Edison have a school full of dedicated readers, they are a no excuses university school. That means the school partners with six local universities, UNO, UNL, UNK, Nebraska Wesleyan, the College of St. Mary, and Bellevue University to help students explore what life might be like in college and beyond. It's never too early to think about post-secondary education, especially our students who dream of becoming educators. Edison proudly welcomes its own students back home once they've graduated with their college degrees. Did you know that two of Edison's teachers attended Edison Elementary when they were kids? Wow! They're proud to be back home preparing the next generation of leaders. As you know, we plan throughout the spring and summer to begin the school year using our family three to instructional model. We made the decision to transition to our 100% remote model after thoughtful deliberation about health conditions in our community. Within the weeks before our first day of school, heightened health concerns and health risks played a significant part in our decision making as virus numbers in Douglas County increased. Due to those conditions, our school district determined the remote learning instructional model was the safest way to begin the year. We miss seeing our students and families in person every day. We are actively preparing to welcome our students and families back in person when it is possible. We know this past weekend marked the start of fall athletics. We understand the disappointment of our students and families who looked forward to engaging in those extracurricular activities this fall, not just sports, but all of the arts and other activities as well. Just as we'd like to be together in person learning inside the classroom, we wish our students could take to the fields, trails, courts, and courses to compete. But we know allowing students to engage in close contact through sports practices and contexts places them at greater risk for virus spread amongst each other. We know that sometimes people can be asymptomatic, not realizing that they have contacted the virus and need a test. We know that sometimes asymptomatic people are unaware they need to quarantine, which can lead to increased community spread. This summer, our district and districts across the country saw cases among student athletes, which required, in some cases, entire teams to quarantine. Our decision to suspend fall sports is informed by information and guidance from the Douglas County Health Department and partners like UNMC. The decision to suspend fall sports was not made lightly. To our students and families voicing frustration, we want you to know that we empathize with you. We understand that some families disagree with the decision and we understand your frustration. We understand because we share it. Like you, we've done our very best to make the best possible possible decisions we can with the information we have available to us at the time. We know that at times information changed by the hour and day by day. We continue to closely monitor what's happening with virus numbers in our community to guide our decision making. We've made these decisions to protect the health and safety of our staff, students, and their families. In addition, we've made these decisions to protect some of the most vulnerable members of our population like our students' extended family members, grandparents, and family members with underlying health conditions. Just as we look forward to returning to in-person learning, we look very much forward to the return of athletics, of arts, and all of the activities that our young people enjoy when we can deliver them in a safe and responsible manner. We want to thank our information management systems team who worked around the clock to ensure our families have the technology and support needed for remote learning. I learned this morning that the delivery schedule is more than 10 days ahead. As expected, we had to engage in some troubleshooting with technology these first few weeks of 100% remote learning. We appreciate the partnership of our families and supporting students. Our one-to-one -one technology initiative has played an important role and in delivering high quality instruction already this fall. To date, we've delivered more than 41,000 iPads to our students. 
We are on schedule to deliver the remainder very soon. We continue to monitor health conditions in our community. They play a vital role in our decision making and how we will proceed beyond this first quarter of our school year. We will continue to communicate with and update our families as early as possible once decisions are made. We know this is an unprecedented time and that families may face attendance challenges during remote learning instruction. At the same time, attendance remains critically important as students learn online until we can re responsibly return to the classroom. We want to provide a friendly remi reminder that teachers take attendance daily at the start of the school day and during each online instruction session. We're asking our families to help make sure students are on time, prepared for class, and logged in. We ask that our families call into the student attendance office on days when your student is unable to participate in daily scheduled remote learning sessions. Demonstrating our ethic of care for those we serve, we hosted a Families Learning from Families webinar series in early August. The first session, Social Emotional Learning, Managing Anxiety and COVID-Related Concerns, and Digital Citizenship, covered ways parents can support their children at home, how to identify signs of anxiety, and share tips and strategies for managing anxiety. The second session, Creating a Safe Remote Learning Environment, addressed ways families can create inviting home learning spaces, encourage healthy media and technology usage, and offered best practices parents can adopt to become effective at-home learning coaches. As part of our support to families during 100% remote instruction, we are continuing our Family Support Center at Morton Middle School one day each week through September. It's a one-stop shop assisting families with questions about nutrition services, technology, counseling, social workers, student support liaisons, and bilingual liaisons. We continue to listen to feedback from our families on ways we can offer support. We offer kudos and congratulations that even in the midst of challenging times, our students continue to shine. Let's end on a high note by extending congratulations to students who received scholarships late this summer, as well as share an awards announcement. Congratulations to North High graduate, LJ McFall for earning the North High Teachers Award, the McMillan Magnet Scholarship and the Harley Alexander Collins Scholarship, Central High graduate Caitlin Engel for being awarded the Fullerton PTA Resiliency Scholarship and the Donald and Mildred Othmer Scholarship. North High graduate Mu Law A. Shu for receiving the Brian J. Slabotsky Memorial Scholarship. Central High graduate Arian Ally for earning the Frank Groby Award Scholarship. And to all of the Macmillan Magnet School alums who earned scholarships from the school to support them as they begin their college journey this fall. Hannah Miller, Eleanor Dunning, Jenna Arbuckle, and LJ McFall of North High, Am Cami of Central High, and Paradise, Paradise Sullivan of Benson High. Congrats, Monarchs. This year has brought with it challenges unlike any we've ever seen in the past century. Through it all, we are learning the importance of patience, flexibility, and adaptability. Health and safety have and will continue to be at the forefront of our decision making. We care deeply for our students and share frustration with our families that we are unable to learn in person or engage in athletics, arts, and other activities at this time. I'm reminded of the state swim meet this winter before the pandemic forced such a dramatic change in our daily routines. It was awe-inspiring to see athletes from across our district cheer as one group at the meet, coming together to represent Omaha Public Schools. We are just as eager as our students and families to enjoy those opportunities again when it is safe to do so. I want to remind our families that we will continue to communicate the most current information using direct emails, our social media and website, text messaging and phone calls. We are here to support our students and families. If you have questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to contact your child's school. Thank you for joining us. Stay healthy and stay well. To stay up to date on the latest school district happenings and updates or to send me a direct message, follow me on Twitter at my official Twitter handle at OPS underscore Logan Soup.